Dana Way Contender Series, Week 6, 2024. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Andy from Wager Talk. We're going to break down all of these fights. Before we get into it, I just want to remind everybody, hit the like button. If you could leave a comment, that would help me out greatly. It helps the algorithm. The, 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 the word of the week is going to be key. So to put the word key in the comment section. If you don't have a hot take, uh, just want to help out, that would be great. But please leave your best bets uh, in the comment section. I would love to know what you guys are liking. Um, some interesting fights. I do think this is a bettable card. I said last week I didn't like a lot of the, the, the bets. And we actually did not have any official plays before the fights happen. And when we do our live stream, we said we're going to get one live play win out of it and be done. And we got a live play. We hit it. And it was great. This week, I think it's a little bit different. I do think there are some fights that you can bet on. I am going to have one official play up at wagertalk.com. That is a play that I play with my own money. Uh, play that clients play with their own money. So when I do these breakdown videos, we're not betting all of these. Um, so if you guys want to bet all of them, by all means, go ahead. Uh, I am not recommending that. Uh, these are just my opinions on the videos. If you want the official play, that is up at Wager Talk. And on Tuesday, if you're watching this on Monday night, if you're watching this on Tuesday, that play is only five bucks. We're running uh, specials every Tuesday now, and uh, we get to do a $5 play. And the $5 play that I'm going to do this week is on Dana White Contender Series, because unlike last week, I think this is the week we can make some really good money to in, in, on it. So let's get into it here real quick. All right. I said real quick. We're a minute 30. Come on, Lang. Get it together. All right. Let's talk uh, Mantello and Hassan Zada. Uh, these guys are, uh, unfortunately, they're both veterans of Dana White Contender Series. And I say unfortunately because they're coming back because it didn't go so well. Uh, Dylan Mantello, I called this. I was very proud of myself. I didn't trust him in the slightest on his last Contender Series fight. He got choked out in the first round. So cash that one. So immediately I'm going into this fight wanting to fade Dylan Mantello because I've I've done that before. Uh, Hassan Zada. Well, he didn't make it. He didn't do so well uh, on Contender series, series either, but he was in 2022. So he's had three fights uh, since then. These guys do have one thing in common, and that is that they eat punches and that they wear damage and they both can get clipped. I think if you're betting on this fight, you're just playing with fire. Uh, Dylan Mantello in his last fight that he won. So credit to Mantello. Lose on Contender Series. What does Dana White always say? Go get some more fights and come back. So he does. Here's the problem. He was walking into punches from Nate Williams. Like even the, the announcers were just like, man, Mantello just keeps walking into these punches. His, his face is damaged up. And then he lands this flying knee from hell. It was a beautiful shot. It goes down as a win. So if you're just looking at his record, you're going, oh, flying knee knockout. No, he was losing that fight. and He was not looking good. So I've watched Dylan Mantello uh, get choked out. I've watched him walking into strikes until he lands a flying knee. So I'm just not that high on him. But man, this Hassan Zada guy, he will get not, he's not, it's not a question of is he going to get clipped? It's how bad is he going to get clipped and can he survive? He has gotten clipped in some of these fights where it was like, I'm surprised the ref didn't stop it. Um, that being said, he survived thanks to the generosity of some refs not stopping it. Um, he, he's got a nice, that knee bar against Blair was a pretty slick little knee bar. Um, I mean, Sacliani really, really, really clipped him pretty good, um, early. So if you're betting on these two guys, you're just betting on guys who both could get knocked out. Let's just be honest. I, I would lean ever so slightly with Hassan Zada. Cause I think his ground game is a little bit better. And, you know, I've just watched Mantello eat a lot of shots, like kind of in, vol in volume. Hassan Zada tends to take like the big one and then recovers from it. I think if you're betting on this fight, you're playing with fire. Um, it's it's probably it's listen, it's pro the smart play is dog or pass on this one. I'm going to pass mostly because I bet against Dylan Mantello. That's kind of my mindset going into it. So I'm just going to be I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be safe, cautious and say, I don't want I don't want anything to do with this fight because both these guys, it's not a question of if it's just when and how many of these shots are they going to eat. Their striking defense is just uh, not really there. So, all right, up next, you're a uh, uh, Nido and I talk about Gautier, I believe is uh, how the name is pronounced. I try when I try to pronounce these, I go look at like some of their older 
fights and how the announcers do it. And then I, I try and pronounce it how the woman at weigh-ins and face-offs does earlier in the day. So, um, by all means, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, listen, if you're just doing the eye test on face-offs, holy cow, does God here look like an animal? Guy has got muscles c- coming from every part of his body. He's got muscles where I didn't even know there were muscles. He is absolutely shredded. Um, he's got a couple holes in his game. One of them is that he <laughs> when he's fighting guys that are two and twenty three and zero and one, um, whatever. Uh, so this Glenn Williams that he loses, uh, he did not show very good takedown defense, and he didn't show good cardio, and that is a gigantic red flag on this one. Now, is he allowed to get better? Of course, he's allowed to improve. But you know, this this fight was two years ago, um, and he hasn't fought anybody that's really going to push. Uh, the takedowns, uh, and this is what this is what Yura does. He's a wrestler, man. Um, what's interesting is Yura does not look like this. He, did, he looks like he's lost a little bit of muscle. He's still kind of bigger, um, but whatever. Um, I I kind of I like his game. I think he's a pretty strong wrestler, and I think his um, I think his cardio is is pretty good. He hasn't had to use it in his last couple fights, but we did see him go the distance and and win. Uh, win a, a decision. I think this is just Gaudier is going to come out with so much energy and he's really going to do like, he's going to swing really, really hard. I think Naito can escape kind of that danger and get Gaudier to where he's tired. And then it's just, Euro's just going to kind of waltz to a, to a win. Maybe he gets the ground and pound finish. Um, but if you're, you're, uh, you just, you're like, I got to zap this guy's energy and I got to take away his knockout power and I got to do it early. So I would expect you to keep this. It's going to start off on the feet clearly, but man, if you're, you're, uh, you just want to work this guy. Like, even if your takedowns are not super successful in the first round, make him work, get him tired. And then it's your world. So if God is going to win, I think it's got to be by a KO, KO early. Now he can do it. He's violent, but. I think as the fight progresses, as long as it goes a little bit longer, I think Yura kind of pulls away with the wrestling, especially if Gaudier's cardio goes away because Yura's going to Yura's going to have the cardio cardio advantage. I think so. I think Yura probably gets it done. This would be a great live bet opportunity if Gaudier looks great early and lands some like big strikes, but then you start to see him get a little tired, then uh, then starts to fall off. Yura uh, would be a pretty good live bet. Benjamin Bennett and Joey Hart. These are the closest odds. Uh, pretty close to pick them. I think maybe Joey Hart might be a little bit of a favorite. I like Benjamin Bennett in this one. Hart is going to be taller. He's going to have the reach. He's got pretty good jabs. My problem with him is he just gets really flat-footed at times. And I mean, there's there's like parts of the fight, like not when he's tired, like when he is just standing there and he's gotten clipped. His striking defense is not great. Um, and he's, he's, he's kind of one of these guys that because he's just been really a lot more naturally gifted than some of the guys that he's been fighting. He, he really hasn't been exposed to some of those weaknesses that he has. His lack of movement on the feet can really, really, uh, be bad. And then, like I said, he's been clipped. So is Benjamin Bennett, the guy, Uh, to take advantage of it. I think yes. And I actually think what's going to happen is Bennett is going to catch him flat footed and he's going to implement some wrestling. I've watched Bennett kind of do some pretty good work with the wrestling. And I think he's just got a little bit better overall game. I think striking is ever so slight edge to heart, but don't be surprised if Bennett gets in there. Um, This last fight where he went to decision, I thought that was a really good like decision win because he was still active in the third round um, he was doing uh, pretty good damage, but he can also, you know, land some, uh, you know, he can also get some first round knockouts. He's kind of lost to Trey Waters. That's not a terrible uh, loss to have on your record. Um, so I think Bennett is going to be able to squeak out some rounds with some wrestling that I I think, I think Joey Hart, just when he stands there and he's so flat footed and he's not ready to move out of the way, I think Bennett can get some success there. It's going to be close. I think this one goes the distance. So if you're looking at total prop, this one absolutely screams go the distance. I lean Bennett to win by decision in a, a really close one. Uh, Dallas Tishera and Arthur Lopez. Okay, uh, the mystery, the enigma that is 
Arthur Lopez. We see a lot of these guys where we really don't know that much about them. And we see them on contender series. And you're like, well, how did they end up on contender series? This one, I don't have, I don't, I don't really know. I don't have an explanation how Lopez ended up on contender series. I would like to go back to this fight against Nascimento, which was in 2018. Yes, he's fought one time since 2018. So he he gets on top. He's in guard of Nascimento. And by the way, the the the, the footage is like on a phone. By the way, so any film that you've seen of uh, Lopez, it's just it's grainy. It's been through a million renderings. So Nascimento is. He's got the guard, and he throws up an, an illegal kick, and they just call the fight. Like, okay, nice win. Um, this guy that he beat, Daniel B- B- Boucher, whatever. Uh, I mean, I, I, listen, I've seen fighters where it looks like they take a dive. I, if, if Daniel Boucher is a real fighter, um, I would I would really like to know who he – I would like to see these fighters that he actually beat. Because, man, he, he lasted 20 seconds. He got his absolute ass kicked. He just walked in there like he was getting a payday and he was paid to take a dive. Um, not accusing, just saying that's a possibility. So we have this Arthur Lopez who you cannot find very good film of him. He's fought since March of 2018. The man has fought for 20 seconds uh, in a fight. And I will I will be honest. I was looking at, at Taliesin to share, and I have so many holes in this man's game that I was like, these odds are ridiculous. To share is like minus 720. Um, I was looking at him. Okay, he gets these knockouts against the Fonseca bros. Um, I don't even know if they're brothers, but they have the last they have the last name. Uh, they might be brothers. I don't know. Didn't didn't bother to look them up because I don't think we're gonna be seeing them in the UFC anytime soon based on the film that I watch. Uh, Teixeira, he's, what is he, 24 years old? Um, I'm not a big fan of, he looks a little lackadaisical with his body language in the ring. And he's got these, he's got these big finishes. And he's another guy that he's just been the bigger, stronger athlete when he fights these guys. And he, he can let himself get accepted up against the cage because he knows he's just going to land the huge KO shot. Um, I think he was ripe to be beat if they would have given him a fighter with a pulse. Unfortunately, I think they did not give him a fighter that has a, a chance in here. So I think this might be a Teixeira kind of romp. And I say that because I watched weigh-ins and face-offs today. And I do not want to take that much away from weigh-ins and face-offs. But Arthur Lopez looked like he looked like a clown. He did not look like a professional fighter, and I have completely flipped my 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 opinion on this. These guys that have fought on contender series with no film, and we don't know that much about, they've actually had some success. I don't think Arthur Lopez is this guy. He's been he fought at what he fought at like this weird welter. Did he was fighting at welterweight, and now this is a heavyweight. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, but I will tell you this, this to share a guy, I, I have, I have a lot of questions about just his overall energy when he fights, because he doesn't throw a lot of volume. Um, he saves up for the big KO power and it's worked against bad guys, but I'm not sure how it works against, you know, really good fighters. That being said, what does Dana say? I need heavyweights. He's probably going to win. He's probably going to knock the guy out. He's probably going to go to UFC we're going to want to fade him and then they're going to put him up against these bottom of the barrel UFC heavyweights because there's no heavyweights. So I think he's going to succeed because of a lack of talent in the, in the heavyweight. Um, I can't fade him. I wanted to fade him, but after seeing Arthur Lopez, there's just absolutely no chance that I fade uh, to share. So uh, it's chalky. I was ready to try and do a little contrarian play. Uh, but after seeing Lopez, there is no way I'm putting my hard earned money onto that one. So, uh, once again, guys, if you could hit the like button, uh, the word of the day is key. Put that in the comment section. Tell me who your best bet is. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, breaking down NFL videos. We're breaking down, uh, all kinds of, uh, sports as well. Thank you so much for joining us. And all of our official plays will be at wager talk. Tuesday is $5 Tuesday. This best bet on Dana White contender series will be available for only five bucks. So I encourage everyone uh, to grab that.
All right, let's talk about the main event. Uh, this is a guy that uh, if you if you follow some of the some of the the I don't want to say lower promotions, whatever the rest of the regionals, uh, you probably know Aaron Toe. Uh, I he's a lunatic. I love him. He's great. He's such a character, and we could definitely use more characters um, in 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 uh, mixed martial arts. Okay, um, so he showed up to his last last fight with a big face tattoo. Immediately, I'm a little worried about that, even though it's a pretty dope tattoo, and it does fit his personality 100%. Um, so Aaron Toe, my problem with him is he's very low volume. When he does strike and attack, it's with a lot of ferocity. It's with a lot of violence. He's had a couple pretty big slams that look good. Like, they're, they're nice highlights, but then he doesn't do much with it. On the feed, he kind of stalks his opponent wants to throw the big shot, but he will go a long time without throwing punches or he'll go a long time without doing anything. But when he does it, you know, it's, you know, it makes great for a TikTok or makes great for a Instagram. Like you see a guy with this big tattoo slamming a guy to the, like if you were to just take his last couple, like big time slams to the ground and put them on Instagram, you'd be like, my God, is this guy a UFC champion? Like, no, what they left out was like the previous minute and a half. He didn't throw one strike. So that's my big knock on him. He's not real polished. I don't think, I think he's a little bit raw. Um, he's just so intense. You can tell he fights with emotion. Um, he's exciting. And I think he loses. I really like Elijah Smith. I think Elijah Smith might be the best uh, potential uh, UFC prospect. I, I, he checks all the boxes um, for me. Um, Smith, he has pretty good power. He has really good takedowns. I've, I've, I watched him uh, have some really nice control times. He can uh, he can back it up with he can back it up with good control time up against the fence. Um, I think he's just a little bit more polished. He's got a really long jab that I think he's going to use. <clears throat> I think he needs some work before he's going to be a real threat in the UFC, but I think he's got the potential to be a top 15 guy. Um, he is, uh, what's his age? No, they don't even have his age. Uh, I saw it, but um, he's just kind of in his prime. And I think he's going to uh, put on a pretty good, like really mature performance here. I think he works the jab. I think he kind of gets to take down and I think he takes advantage of toes, like explosiveness where toe just doesn't quite get it done. And like I said, he's just, the volume just isn't there. Elijah Smith is going to have more volume. Maybe Toe has like a couple of big moments. That's got to be his hope is he either gets the knockout or he like steals around because he lands a big shot. But Elijah Smith isn't real easy to hit. And I think Toe's going to have real problems trying to get inside. I don't see Toe getting a big explosive slam um, and holding Smith down. I think Smith has the advantage in there. So I, 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 I do think Elijah Smith is um, pretty good. So, Toe is always going to be live for the knockout, but I just don't think he gets there. I think this is a little bit too big of a step up in competition, and I'm pretty high on Elijah Smith. So, all right, that is going to do it for it for the Dana White Contender Series. Thanks so much. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Word of the day is key. Leave it in the comment section. Tell me who your best bet is. Appreciate all you guys. Good luck in your plays, and we will see everyone on the live stream on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel. Myself and Jim will be watching the uh, Contender Series. Again, last week, we had no plays. No plays going into the fights because we thought it was a dicey card. We said we just need one live betting opportunity to turn some profit. We hit one play, and that was it. Easy peasy. Love it. Uh, but for this week, we are going to have one play uh, pre-fights going into there. But join us uh, for the live stream uh, so we do live plays as well. So good luck. We'll see everyone later.